Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday. This is episode 24. That means 24 consecutive weeks of our weekly Van Life RV show, currently June 23 in 2021. My name is Scott. Um, welcome to my YouTube channel, Go Small, Live Large. We're all about the Class B RV lifestyle. And whether you're no time still researching, part time, taking cool trips for days, weeks, or months, or maybe you live full-time in your van like I do. It's just a pleasure to have you here. What we do here is we learn together, we share together, and then you decide what's best for you. That's the way we roll here. Though I've been living in my van since February 2019, which is about 28 months. That's a lot of van time, by the way. I certainly don't know everything. So I learned a tremendous amount from you, the viewers. And uh, when it's really good stuff, and even some of the not good so good stuff. We show that out here. That's what we do. That's what this show is all about. It's all about you, your questions, and then we bring guests on occasionally and some of the content just to help us be better RVers. And uh, we have a great uh, crowd grad gathering tonight already. Um, so let's just say hi to them quick. And this is the um, the format we'd like to have questions in, which is right here. So it's three asterisks followed by three question marks. And then ask your question. My question for you is where are you watching from tonight? And um, this is a, we got a kind of a cool show. We're going to experiment a little bit tonight. So um, I hope this works. It's YouTube live, like live television. So you never know. Here's Ron coming at us uh, from upstate New York. Um, going to miss upstate New York this go around, but hopefully next year. Um, here's South Lyon, Michigan. I'm actually headed to the Detroit area later this week. Going to stay at Pontiac Lake State Park, I think it is. I'm really excited about that. Never been to Detroit before. So uh, I am really excited about that. And um, let's see, we had uh, Michael Clark is in from uh, Mesa, Arizona, where it's hopefully cooling down a little bit. And um, yeah, we got a, a, a merry-go-rounds in Vegas still, going to be in Vegas for Halloween. Um, so we got kind of a fun show for you tonight. Let me show you what we got in store for you. And let me look off camera here. So I'm coming at you live from Elkhart, Indiana. I'm still in Elkhart. Uh, actually kind of returned. I was in Chicago the previous week. And what we're doing here is we, we've been working with Coachman. We've been working with Embassy RV, and we've been working with some Volta training. Um, so I am still in the RV capital of the world. I, I'm curious where you're watching from. It's really interesting to find out where you folks are watching from because we get viewers from across the planet, and I am not kidding about that. So if you're coming from a really cool country or maybe a not so cool country, I don't know, uh, let us know where you're watching from. I like to share that out. Um, last week, we showed the flag of Qatar, Qatar, K, uh, Q. A T A R in the Middle East. Um, so I learned what the, the cutter flag was. I never even knew what that was. So that's what, again what we do here is we learn, we share. Uh, so let us know where you're watching from. And um, we are seriously on the move, ladies and gentlemen. I want to share this with you. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see this. We have a, probably a really big announcement next week. Um, I'm solo tonight. I do not have a guest. That's not true. This is our guest right here, Lily. We're going to talk about van wrap tonight. So Lily's our guest. That's the name of my van. <laughs> Um, but let me show you this because we are seriously on the move. I have a pretty big announcement next week. I'm going solo, no guests next week. And if you look at this route plan, kind of in the upper Michigan, Ohio area, uh, we are taking Route 66 from Chicago to LA. Um, takes about a month to get there, going slow, then up the West Coast, and then through Washington State, down through Idaho, down through Colorado, down to Las Vegas for Halloween, and then up uh, through Arizona, Texas. Nashville, we've got a big announcement coming up about that. Channel Campout in Nashville, and then down to home base, Florida. So the point being, uh, I think we're going to make two big announcements next week. Um, and it has to do with that map and <laughs> what this is all about. So I'm really excited about that. And um, Route 66, again, the bigger announcement that next week, this is kind of a soft launch. But what we're going to do is we're going to mark places on the map where I'm going to start and stop. And then I asked for you to join me, whether you have a van already, maybe a different kind of an RV, maybe you're just doing a car and you want to hang, you know, do a road trip. So an example would be Pontiac, Illinois, down to um, maybe uh, St. Louis, Missouri. So it's not that far uh, of a drive, and it would be just a joy to have you kind of caravan along with. I think and then you kind of turn around and go back home, and I keep moving toward California. So we're going to do that throughout the trip. So big announcement, kind of a soft launch. This is my third soft launch on this. I'm just so excited. I'm already getting songs of the week. 
is about Route 66. Um, tonight, we're going to do a live tour of the of the van wrap. Um, I see some questions coming in here. Get your questions coming in. Uh, again, this is about you asking me really about anything. But tonight, we're going to focus on the van wrap because uh, many of you have asked about it. The van wrap turned one year old last month. Um, literally 30 days ago, turned one year old. And it has had a problem. I want to share that with you. That's what we do here. We be, we're transparent. This is not all rainbows and unicorns being in a van. It's pretty close. So. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, our special guest, like I mentioned, is Lily, my van. Uh, we have upcoming guests. Coachman. Met with uh, Nick. He's the GM at uh, Coachman. He is so cool, you guys and gals. Um, we spent an entire day shooting videos. Uh, I'm going to meet with him, uh, I think, next week, two weeks, in two weeks, as I come back through Elkhart. And uh, he's going to be our special guest. Um, they build some amazing vans on Transit, Mercedes, and ProMaster. I'm super excited about that. And Storyteller has been out at the um, at the uh, that van show out in the uh, in the uh, in the West where uh, Chad and Paul were. So I haven't got a response, a firm response from him yet. The uh, chapter, the owner, but hope to. Um, we have an upcoming event. And if you're not familiar with this, um, these are on my website under the events tab on in the navigation. We're going to do Vans on Madison. Again, whether you have a van or not, you're welcome to join us. And uh, it's going to be in Forest Park, Illinois, a little village 10 miles um, exactly west of downtown Chicago. We used to live there. And let me zoom in for you so you can see this. Um, I'm asking for e free Eventbrite tickets so I know who's coming and we can stay in communication via email. Um, I'm doing this more often now because it just helps me organize better. But it's again, Saturday, July 10, 9 a.m. We're going to have dinner. dinner. We're going to have breakfast at this really cool 1950s style diner. So if you're in the Chicagoland area and you want to kind of sync up with us and do what I call a roundup, it would be a delight to have you. Um, so just a few more little things, and then we'll get into the crux of the matter here this evening. And yes, um, subscribe to the email. So we are now doing a twice a month email campaign to keep you updated. Little bits of um, dateline. What am I seeing? Uh, some tips and tricks, um, some new information we're not going to see on YouTube. And subscribe to that. doesn't cost you anything. I'm not selling your stuff, your email addresses. And it's really just for us a better way to communicate. Um, so we finally got my act together on that. Many of you have asked for that. I appreciate your help on that. This recent video, this was a big one. We had... Um, Nick, who's the GM at Sunshine State RVs, they did not pay to be on this program. Um, we just really like the way they roll. They focus only on Class Bs. And if you haven't seen that What's Up Wednesday replay, go see it because he gives you a live tour of a Coachman Beyond, which is on a Ford Transit. Just a beautiful rig. They make some really beautiful rigs. I, Man, if I had to go buy a new rig today, it would really be a ball toss. Um, Coachman's so beautiful. Um, and he announced live on the show last week this really special exclusive thing, which is he has a Beyond and a Nova on his lot, and as of a week ago, he's going to guarantee that that is on his lot for 60 days, minus a week. Um, so you can fly down to Gainesville, Florida, and test drive those two units. He is not going to sell them for the next two months, so you can actually test drive those two vans, the Nova, which is on ProMaster, and the Beyond, which is on Transit, and see if you like it or not. Nobody wants to buy an RV as a blind date and then decide you made a $100,000 decision uh, mistake, right? So he's putting it out there, and he announced it live um, on this show last week. So hit them up, um, uh, Nick and the team at Sunshine State RVs. I think that's it. Maybe one more thing. Um, yeah, question of the week. We had a good question, which is kind of about the wrap tonight. So that's where this came from. And uh, RV news headlines, there's the wrap question. And song of the week, and, of course, pet pick of the week. And let's get to your questions. We're going to do the van wrap tour here in probably about 15 minutes. So get the questions coming in. And uh, it's just always a delight. So I see there's a few folks in here kind of poking fun at me. Um, and I appreciate that. Um, I've got much thicker skin because of the audience and being on YouTube. Um, hey, give it a thumb up. That sure helps uh, Lily know that you liked the video. And um, comment below. Get your questions rolling in. All the questions seem to roll in at the end. The show only goes for an hour. So it's really important to get those questions coming in so we can get them answered. Um, it's kind of a one and done. Um, unlike some YouTubers that have these marathon sessions, um, I think we get the crux of the matter, you know, the big meat of the, uh, of the meal consumed in the first hour. So let's do that. Um, let's see, Jim Cahill's got a question right out of the gate. Let me take this off. Uh, this is the YouTube live portion. And uh, again, this is, um, so uh, Jim wants to know, will Scott uh, let the silver paint see the sun again? Nope. <laughs> no way. The wrap is too cool. It is too 
cool. Um, I see the silver vans and they're nice. I had one, but um, it kind of looks like every other silver van. I don't want that. Uh, my van is so unique. And I think that's why vans are so interesting because they really reflect the personality of the owner. And there's so many things you can do to them. I think that's why the adventure vans in particular agree or disagree with me are so popular, like storyteller, man, we got some cool van tours coming up. Um, um, even owl vans. If you saw the, and if you haven't seen it, go back and look at the YouTube live that Chad and Paul did. Uh, they're in a storyteller. Now they were in a Travato KL and it's a two part random, uh, YouTube live running around that, um, that, uh, adventure van expo. And you can see what people are doing to their vans. And I think that's why vans are cool. So by wrapping the van, it reflects my personality, which is, um, kind of the whole point. Um, so that Michael Clark chimes in, um, I have a feeling Scott uh, will either get it repaired or maybe do another van wrap. I would do another van wrap in a minute. It's expensive. Um, we need to get some more YouTube uh, viewers uh, to help me pay for that bad boy, but uh, I would definitely wrap it again. Um, paint it maybe, but then you're kind of really stuck with the color, right? Um, this I could peel it off and change, uh, change, uh, change something up. Um, yeah. If I go back to the, uh, if I unwrap it, it goes back to a silver van. So how was that for resale value? You can have what I, I have, um, and here it is sitting out front. Um, so this, the, the brown, that's a full exterior color change. If I get tired of the cowboy motif, which is the black, I can peel the black off, the brown remains, and then maybe I can put, I don't know, maybe my inner ninja warrior comes out and I put an Asian motif on it. Pretty cool, right? Um, so got some good questions coming in. Uh, let just raced right by them. So let me get back to here. Um, yeah, Michael, we're going to talk, of, we're going to show you up close uh, tonight and, and what that, uh, um, well, not what the paint looks like underneath. Um, I'm sure it's pretty protected because it's been not in the sun for over a year. So I had that, the wrap installed in May of 2019. Uh, this being end of June, it's really literally been one year and a month. So it's really great. Wisconsin. I am so bummed. I'm going to miss Wisconsin. I love Milwaukee. I love Milwaukee. One of my favorite cities in America, for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, Jim says he's going to wrap his uh, future Travado in chrome. That would be cool. You ever seen a car wrapped in chrome? It is so audacious. I love it. Um, they actually have a really nice color. I almost wrapped the van in it. So this is kind of a metallic um, gold brown, as they call it, and it changes color in the light which i really like it in in the dusk it becomes black almost but they had this pearl essent purple that was absolutely stunning and um it was really a ball toss on to go brown or purple i'm kind of glad it went brown <laughs> actually california in the house tonight thanks hi kathy thanks for joining us get those questions rolling in folks um flagger beach uh, bob scott you guys are awesome Thank you for joining tonight. It was so great to meet you a couple weeks ago. Spokane, Washington, my home, home, hometown. That's where I, I was born in Moses Lake, Washington. I went to high school in Spokane. So always a soft spot in my heart for Spokane. My uh, my family lives there. My parents, my brother, my sister, their families. So we're going to be out there um, as part of that big trip we showed earlier. Um, we got some special things planned, including a camp out um, in Wallace, Idaho. Uh, oh, we got so many things going on for you folks. Um, I'm just so, so excited. This last month has just been crazy, starting with the Volta headquarters tour and all these kind of things. Um, Greg in Florida, Orlando. Hello, Missouri. We're going to be rolling through uh, St. Louis as part of the Route 66. So, Rhonda, hopefully you can join us for some of that. Cape Cod in the house. Nice. Frisco, Texas. I can't wait to get back to Texas. Oh, my gosh. Um, Duluth, Minnesota, birthplace of Bob Dylan. He is a cool cat that has been such an influence on music, right? Um, here's our friend from Cutter. Hey, Joe, what's up? 2.15 2 in the morning? Yes, 2.15 a.m. in the morning. Pretty awesome. Woodstock, Lake Havasu. Love Lake Havasu, where the real London Bridge is actually at. It's pretty interesting. Um, Rob's in Minneapolis. Sherry, good to see you tonight. Thanks for tuning in, Jim. And here's Michael Clark with a question. Uh, so let's take a look at that. And this is the format: three question or three asterisks, three question marks. So help with that. Uh, thanks. Uh, that helps me find it in the in the chat. Um, and uh, I say, hey Scott, speaking of maps, a little nostalgia question: Do you still have your huge uh, laminated map of the U.S. from your early years on this channel? <laughs> That's a great question, man. You've been going on this for a long time. Short answer is no. Um, I did carry it for a while, um, and it just was kind of unwieldy. 
and uh, I used it, um, I think once or twice, I magnet magnetically attached it to the van. Um, but um, that, I was making YouTube videos about van life before I had a van. It was on order and I was using it as a route planning tool, but now I'm kind of using the um, my small maps. Uh, I've got one in the back and one above the door here. Um, but that's a lot of fun. And I do have an atlas with me. So like a Rand McNally atlas, it's just nice to see a paper version of a map to really help visualize. Now you can do it on my iPad, you can pinch and zoom really easily, but there's something for me very tactile about seeing the entire image at once and being able to um, see the roads. Um, we're so used to navigation, you know, it's, I don't know if you've ever seen the, um, in fact, there's a little homework for you folks. So if you go to YouTube after the show tonight, um, Google um, Ellen um, tricks, um, oh, millennial, something like that. And if you haven't seen those, she gives a millennial like a phone book and asks him to look for a muffler and then use a rotary dial phone to call the muffler shop. And you should see what a 22 year old that's never seen a phone book doesn't even know what a muffler is, doesn't know how to search in a phone book. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. And it's kind of like the maps, right? You give a, an atlas to a, you know, 22 year old and say, Hey, point to point, give me a, give me a route. And they'll be like, uh, and you can't use your iPhone. You can't use your Android phone. And they'd be like, um, call me an Uber probably. I don't know. Uh, it's just so funny. Um, and we still use those icons of those old tools in today's modern environment. I find that just fascinating. Um, so Steve's got some good news here. So checking in from Kentucky. I so love Kentucky. I can't wait to get back to Kentucky. What a great state. And Tennessee. OMG. Such a great place. Scheduled to receive his 22 Coachman Nova. Good job on the lithium, sir. In August. Oh, you're going to just, it's going to change your life. I'm pretty sure they make beautiful coaches. They are just really nice. And, and Nick, um, GM, we're going to get together again. And we're going to see if we can work together somehow. We're trying to figure this out. They just make beautiful, beautiful rigs. And I am so happy for you, Steve. I'm pretty sure it's going to change your life. Mark's got a question here. Did you notice a difference in the temperature inside the van was wrapped in the darker color uh, versus the original? It's a great question. I would say it's a little yes and no. So if you remember back to my original van, which I should have included here um, as, a, as a point, um, so I had a silver van and then I did the bright deluxe paint, which all the bumpers were painted silver. And then Winnebago puts this large uh, black um, silhouette across the side of the van, kind of hiding the windows, kind of giving a, a limousine look, if you will. And you can run like in my bathroom, even here, um, here being you know, the side window right here, um, where that black stripe was, I could definitely feel a heat difference. I mean, pretty dramatic. So the black attracted the sunlight, the silver repelled it a little bit. Now it's not as hot. I don't think it's that black stripe because the it's, it's not a black surface. It's kind of the matted brown, um, but it's kind of all over now. So I'd say, yes, it did heat up overall, but you know how we roll here with being in the sunlight uh, with a lithium equipped rig. You do not need to be in the sunlight. Solar is a trickle charge, and the tip is to stay the heck out of the sunlight because it dramatically, dramatically, I, I'm working on a video, um, increases the temperature with a in the sunlight with a, um, um, the AC blasting at full blast, which would drain the battery fairly quickly. Um, it's still about 90, 95 degrees in here. I am not kidding. Um, you want to stay the heck out of the sunlight. These are vans, even the really insulated ones. They're still vans. Um, and the cab, all the sunlight or the, the, the greenhouse effect. So yes, um, I think it did increase the temperature a little bit, um, but I could feel the difference um, with the black limousine paint uh, versus the silver. So great question. I wouldn't necessarily keep from making a dark colored van or, or buying one, um, but just be aware that the best practice for, I think, a van lifer is to keep the rig out of the van. Um, great question. Look at these questions rolling in tonight. Um, we just talked about this. We just talked about this at the roundup we did just recently um and in um rockford illinois we had a number of channel viewers um come out we talked about the tent and he was going to share the information with me and he did tint his windshield which is the question here have you ever considered uh resistant tint on the windshield and and um just to reduce the greenhouse effect i've done my side windows the driver and the passenger a fairly light tint because i travel in all states and you can tint pretty dark in texas arizona and florida uh, but in Illinois, that would probably be illegal. Um, not sure how that affects you if you had it done someplace else and you have Florida plates on your rig. Um, and it's just really too dark for me. Um, but uh, we did a hand test on the 
dashboard, um, the viewer had done a tint, kind of an ultraviolet tint on the windshield. And we put the hands on his dash versus mine. And let me tell you, it was a dramatic difference. So um, that reminds me, I need to reach out to them and get that information. So we'll share that here, but I will probably do that because it was pretty dramatic because um, this dash gets super hot. Great question. Yes, Michael Clark. Um, so this is kind of part of the question of the night. Um, and I do have this information for you. Got, um, Michael's wanting to know, uh, think about doing the brush guard on my new GL. Can you tell us how much it costs and for the installation? Uh, we talked about that and the wrap itself. And um, so stay tuned. We have that very specific information coming up for you. Um, and I will talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Um, we'll go to the van tour here. Um, nobody stole my iPhone. Let's just check. Nope, nobody stole my phone yet. That's pretty funny, right? Um, and I hope this works. Uh, we kind of tried it with um, Nick at, at Sunshine State RVs. I'm worried about the audio, but I think we'll be okay. Let's see. This is a great question. MP wants to know, is a brush guard useful that often? It's a yes and no answer. Um, I'm not in the brush. I would not subject my rig to being in the brush. It's not meant to be in the brush. It would ruin the paint. It would ruin the wrap. Um I'm an urban cowboy, so I like historic districts. I like discovering distilleries and history and museum, things like that. Um, however, the brush guard, and I am serious as a heart attack on this, is um, the reason I put it on aesthetics for sure, maybe a little bit more front weight, uh, so grip on the tires, a more bite. Uh, but I'm seriously worried about um, deer strike. So hitting a deer is one reason I do not drive at dusk or at night. Um, you will rarely see me driving at night and I might get up early in the morning and drive when the sun's coming up. I've found deers to be way less on the side of the roads at, uh, at dawn than they are at dusk. So I have passed so many, so many deer carcasses and like freshly struck deer, um, where there's still blood on the, on the, you know, on the roadway. The other reason was for road debris. And it has probably paid for itself once already because I was in Nashville and the vehicle in front of me didn't see the, the truck tire tread. And it what it did, it caused it to uh, spin up in front of me. And it you know just happened in just fractions of a second. And it hit the front of my rig. It hit the brush guard. And it kind of bounced off. There was a scuff there for some time. Not really there anymore. Um, that made a pretty loud bang, scared the you know, crap out of me. And... Um, I'm pretty certain if I didn't have that brush guard, it would have pierced the plastic grill at least, if not my, um, my radiator. So that's the two reasons, really the three aesthetics looks better, you know, uh, but really deer, deer strikes and, and road debris, seriously worried about those two things. So that's, that's real, really the reason why I got it. Great question. Would I recommend it? I actually would. Um, if you're out West and if you're in rural environments, I like to take the back roads County roads, I'm telling you that the deer are everywhere and not even just deers. I mean, they have to be kind of up, but um, even, you know, rodents and varmints and armadillos, I just don't want to hit anything. Um, nothing worse than having a dead armadillo stuck in your Volta battery box under the thing, right? So, so I would, um, great question. Good questions tonight. I love this. You folks are really working overtime. Appreciate that. Um, so uh, Live Work Live wants to know, I don't see much on YouTube about the Bolt. What are your thoughts uh, about it versus Travato specifically? Awesome question. So if you were part of our roundup in uh, Rockford, Illinois, the last week it was, um, they actually had a Bolt on the lot. And we climbed through it as Travato G and K owners, and we kind of compared them. And the Bolt is, I got to tell you, it just kind of scratches my head. The floor plan is, in my opinion... Um, not efficient for the size of that space. If you want to look as a comparison, I think they're still uh, listed on Winnebago's website. So go to the Bolt, look at the floor plan, and then by contrast, look at the Coachman Galleria 24A. They're on the exact same extended 170-inch Mercedes uh, Sprinter wheelbase. And look at what Coachman did as part of the Galleria 24A uh, versus what Winnebago did. Winnebago kind of put in two twin beds like a you know, a Travato K and a front galley, and they just put all kinds of cabinets in. Really doing nothing, in my opinion, and that's all it is. And those that were with me the, the other days, we were going through it, kind of agree with me. Nothing really innovative. They just kind of expanded a big K. So it took up all that space with a ton of storage you really don't need. They could have done some really interesting things. I don't think they did. Um, does have a massive Volta system, so that's a plus. Um, 
But um, I think if you are looking at that size of chassis, then you really need to do yourself a favor and look at the Galleria 24A because they did some really amazing things with that entire space, including two twin beds. You can make into a, almost a king size bed in the back of that thing. Um, and you, it's like side by side with a, a cushion thing in the middle, or like a nightstand. And so the back is a bed. They, they bought it. It's really beautiful. And the cabinetry, of course, and a really huge bathroom and a front workspace, which was amazing. So you could have somebody working in front, somebody working in the back. And um, um, so that's why you haven't really seen much about them because I just wasn't overly impressed. Um, I don't know how they're selling. Um, some of the uh, dealers I talk with say they're, they're still available. Others say they, they're, they're not. Um, so I don't know that, or, or that fact right now, but um, do the floor plan comparisons. I think you'll be stunned at the difference. Um, I certainly was. <laughs> Great question. Um, Chicago. Hey, we got a, uh, you saw we have a, uh, Oscar, we have a, um, channel roundup in forest park on July 10, 9 AM. Uh, we're hitting this, um, 1950 style diner, uh, vans on Madison, Madison streets, the main drag through forest park. It'd be a delight to see you there, sir. Um, so Oscar's got a good question here. What's the height clearance of your van with my lift? I kind of rounded off about 10 feet. I think without the lift, it's probably about nine three, nine feet, three inches. Um, I kind of air up. Uh, so with the lift, it's probably nine, six, nine, seven or eight inches. Um, so I just rounded up to 10 feet because I don't want to go under anything that's even going to snag any of that equipment above. Maybe somebody can post the actual height of the, um, Travato factory fresh, uh, in the, in the, in the chat here, that would be cool. But I just round up to 10 feet and I pay attention to the trees when I'm coming into parking spots, uh, excuse me, um, campgrounds, um, and really any place. So ground clearance and clearance above the rig, super, super important um, to know that. And if you're a newbie, I did actually did a video on this. If you're a newbie, here's my hot tip. Take a, a whiteboard marker, not a Sharpie. <laughs> that would be a disaster. Um, take a whiteboard marker and in, in really uh, hard to miss um, color, write clearance across the top of your windshield at your driver viewpoint above the steering wheel, probably just a little bit up to remind you for at least two weeks that you have clearance issues that you don't have in a car, in a van. Super important. I snag something once and I'm like, I got to fix that. So that'd be a tip for you. Jim's got a great question. Oh, you guys have, and gals have great questions tonight. Okay, just a few more minutes. We'll answer this and we'll go outside. Let's just see if Lily's still there. Anybody steal my iPhone yet? Nope, Lily's there. Okay, so stay tuned. We're doing the van wrap exterior uh, tour here in just a second. Let's answer Jim's great question here. And, and um, he wants to know, uh, how often are you stealth camping these days? Um, so if you've been to my roundups, um, I've been pretty transparent about that with those groups. I haven't been so much with the channel. Again, with a couple of really big channel announcements next week. Um, you may have noticed I haven't posted any edited videos for a little while now. There's a specific reason for that. But to answer your question specifically, stealth camping, a street camping, if you will, that's what I would call it. Um, I've not been doing it a lot. Um, I've had some experiences lately where I'm not getting knocked on the door and, and the van by a policeman or security people, but by people kind of roaming around at night. And I might be kind of an obvious thing and they kind of you know bang on the van. And it wakes me up. It scares the crap out of me. And they go away. They're not doing anything really malicious. It's a little bit more of toying with me, maybe. And I have had um, probably three or four of those in the last six months. And it's just unsettling. Um, again, not from security, not from cops, but just being on the street, uh, maybe a block or two off the main drag of a historic area where there's a lot of bar scenes and like that. So maybe they're you know, a little little giddy and boozed up at night and see me and and uh, just you know pound on the, on the side of the van for a second. So I've been doing less of that. The other thing that really got me concerned is when the Nashville Christmas Day bomber blew up his Class C, um, literally a block, two blocks from a Broadway in Nashville where all the honky tonks are and all the country music history, it really kind of gave me cause to pause. Um, Cause I'd actually street camped on that corner a month earlier. And I didn't want to be mistaken for some crazy in an RV with explosives inside. So I just kind of backed off of that a little bit. And so what I've been doing instead is um, Harvest Hosting and Boondockers Welcome. We have some content coming up about that, the comparisons, and they've actually, uh, Boondockers Welcome has been purchased by uh, Harvest Hosts. You might know that. 
Uh, Harvest Host is uh, commercial businesses that allow you to stay overnight free of charge. They expect you to purchase something probably. Um, whereas Boondockers Welcome and only one night in Harvest Host, no services. <laughs> and um, Boondockers Welcome is on private property, either former or current RVers usually. So they have space around their private property that, that allows you to stay. I found anywhere from one to five nights, which is amazing. They let you fill up your water. It really costs you nothing. If you're a plug into their, into their, you know, their garage outlet, they charge you five bucks for the night. Fine. What a deal, right? So I've been doing that instead. Because stealth camping is just, unless it's a, like I did Bristol, Tennessee here recently, and that went really well. Um, I just really scanned the area more carefully now because of those uh, few incidents. So would I encourage it? I think it's part of the van experience. Um, am I doing it as a matter of camping all the time? Way less, way less. Um, I don't do Walmarts anymore because um, they're just, yeah, they're so many no parking signs. I think people abused that uh, um, privilege. And local ordinances came in, so no overnight parking in places, and just kind of ruined it for everybody. I have been doing Cracker Barrels, but um, those are actually pretty good. Um, they make a pretty good eggs and ham, you know, for seven bucks. <laughs> you can stay the night and get fed at night or the morning. Um, so great question. So let's do this. I am going to run outside, and I'm hoping I can change my AirPods from my Macintosh, which you're looking at me through right now, to my iPhone, which is out front. So bear with me. Let's get this off. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up. Hopefully we can see this. So let's see. I'm going to unmute from here. This is a total experiment. So that's a good sign. Okay. So let me get jump outside. Bear with me, folks. More good questions. Stand by. Out the side door. Hey, everybody. Hey, neighbor. I'm staying at a KOA outside of Elkhart. And I'm hearing an echo. Hold on. Ooh, that's gonna hurt. Um, is that gonna work? If you guys can give me a thumb up and let me know if that is coming through okay. Let me scroll to the bottom here quick. Looks like we'll get an interior view too. So just give me a thumb up if that is, ouch, yeah, audio squeaky. Is it better now? Probably have an echo because it's running through this. All good. Okay, thank you, live, work, live. So what I want to do is show you folks the van wrap. Again, this is one year and a month old. And we started out with this part right here because there was a pretty big failure right, um, right above the Jiffy Loop sticker right here. And the problem is... It developed a water bubble because there's a huge seam in the van itself. And what they did is they didn't wrap it far back enough because according to the van wrap person, Chuck at WDR, uh, CRD wraps says that this is kind of a pro master thing that these, these joints, these seams while welded and then bonded with glue um, do tend to adjust a little bit. And that's what caused the leak. So the, the water came down from, on the inside underneath the wrap and it bubbled up right here. And it was a pretty sizable bu bubble. It was probably the size of my, grew to the size of my palm, which is, it was pretty sizable. Fortunately, it happened in Florida. And I called him and um, I said, how do I fix this? He says, bring it in. Don't bust it. Just bring it in. They um, punctured it. We're hoping to kind of re, 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 you know, reattach it, if you will. And what happened is um, it had too much water. It heated up and so it bubbled and it, it couldn't be done. So what they did is they replaced this entire panel all the way back, it went way back from where they were before and they fixed it. Let me show you over here an example of what that bubble is I'm talking about. Because I have one here. We looked at it really carefully and we decided it's not gonna be a problem like the front one. So you see this one here? So it was this kind of a thing right here. So it's it's got a little, this one doesn't have any more um, water in it but it's just this little blister. And again, this thing was huge, size of my hand uh, on the front. So this one, we're just kind of keeping an eye on. It's fine, it hasn't changed size, but it was that. Those were the only two places where the, the wrap has kind of been a little bit of an issue. Um, overall, it still is absolutely in pristine condition. Um, there's a couple places where I've nicked it, um, but even like the hat here, a lot of work, all fully intact. You see that? 
Um, let me close this. And I was frankly worried about this stuff starting to peel off. Let's not worry about the brown, but was worried about the, the silhouette stuff. And you can see that it is really in very good shape. And I unfortunately can't wash this as often as I'd like to. And this is about a month worth of not having the van washed. So it really repels the dirt pretty well. Um, and again, all these seams are staying intact. You can see the wrap seams, right? Um, and there's a lot of seams, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, a ton of seams that this thing has. The one that has, the one part that has shown some wear is the plasti dip on the on the um, the grill itself. So the shiny is the chrome coming through, and I find that that is you know taking a little bit of a beating, largely probably because of um, stone chips, right? So maybe it's protected the chrome underneath um, by flaking off as it gets hit by rocks and stuff. I will say that the bugs um, really don't stick to this material at all. It's really pretty amazing. Um, and I do have a rock chip. That happened about a year and a half ago. See that? Ooh, it's hard to see. But again, looking at the van wrap, all the seams are tight. All the tuck points are, are totally intact, even around the, um, the handles here, which gets tugged on a lot, right? Even these um, tuck points here, where they've put this around the, um, uh, you know, the, the various outlets here, all that's intact. So again, it's really done a beautiful job. I hope that echo is not driving you guys crazy. Um, so a year later, it's in really amazing shape. What do you think? Just amazing shape. There's a couple places like this. I'll show you one place over here where it's coming off a little bit. Right here, it's kind of hard to see. See this? So it's come up there. So I need to get some uh, tape and kind of tape that up like that. Um, there's some nicks on the, um, the uh, running boards right here. So that's what those are, uh, where my foot has kind of slipped off and it's you know dinged the black. But I think you will agree that for a year and probably what 30,000 miles this thing once it's washed looks as good as the day I drove out of the shop it's pretty amazing jump back inside I'm gonna kill this for audio purposes um, the only other place there's been a little bit of issue I needed a ladder it's hard to see here but on the top of the um, awning it's really hard to see. Um, it's kind of it's kind of coming off the backside just a little bit. You see that kind of peel up? That audio is probably not great. Sorry, folks. Um, but that's the only place. Uh, but in general, this thing is just impeccably put together. Here's a couple of nicks here. You see this? Right. So what I'm going to do is kill this out here. I'm going to put this on mute. Give me a minute. Jump back inside. Jump back inside. Uh, hopefully that worked. <laughs> Let's see. Let me just make sure that thing is muted. Okay, if you can give me a thumb up that the um, audio shifted. Make sure this is back here. Bear with me one second. I'm going to mute that guy. Back to the mic. Just remove it. Bear with me, folks. Uh, just make sure the audio is working. Experimenting tonight. Thank you for your patience. Hopefully that worked. I hear that. So we should be hearing my AirPods again. So if you could give me a thumb up that the audio is working, that would be great. Let's put me in here. I can hear the phone out there, which is kind of funny. Um, Catherine's saying it's work. So yay. So what do you think of the van wrap? Isn't that crazy? One year in. Um, I'm shocked. I was not expecting to hold up like this because I am have this thing all over the environment. And I'm telling you, I would do it again in a minute. Um, let's talk about uh, the question of the night, we'll come back to the RV news. Uh, so the question of the night, and some of you have kind of been, uh, talk, asked about this. So the, the question of the night is this. Um, 
so um, Al wants to know about the ProMaster chassis. Two questions. Where'd you get your grill protector installed? What it cost? And who did the interior wrap? So this is what kind of prompted me to do this. So let's, um, and I think one of you also had the same question. So let's put this up here. So let's talk about the brush guard. Let me zoom in here so you can see this. So the brush guard actually was something I wanted to do just from a aesthetic standpoint. Uh, one of our, our viewers, um, oh gosh, I don't want to get her name wrong. Oh, I don't want to get her name wrong. I apologize. I should have put that in there. She um, sent me the Walmart link. So I actually purchased this at Walmart. Excuse me. And the, um, the TAC Grill Guard Custom Fit, that's actually what I ordered. And that is still available as a, as a live link on walmart.com. It comes from a company out of California. It currently says out of stock, and it's been out of stock for a long time. Um, and the price basically doubled from when I purchased mine. I think mine was 300, it's about four or 500 now. Um, and then the link below that, if you can see that, uh, Steelcraft Automotive, uh, that one is available and it is $600. So kind of a demand for these things. It's a, it looks about like the same. Uh, specific to a Ram ProMaster. And um, how did I get installed? Uh, the uh, web address down below, southernoffroad.net uh, .net is who did the install. So what I did is I purchased it on, on walmart.com. I had it shipped from through Walmart from California to um, a, um, Alpharetta, Georgia. And once it got there, then we made an appointment and they installed it. So one of the great things about having a, a, a cat or a dog with you full time is um, we did, they did it while we waited. So I, in three hours, they installed it. it. cost $300 to get installed. It cost me $300 to buy the hardware. So $600 for that total project. So Al, that answers your question specifically. And another one of you had this, I think, a very similar question. Um, would I do that again? I would absolutely do that again in a second. I would highly recommend it if you're planning to travel a lot. And for the reasons I mentioned, aesthetics and bite on the, you know, a little more traction, yes, but mostly for deer strikes. Um, that's the biggest on road debris. Um, I see shredded tractor tra trailer tires everywhere. It scares, the, um, it scares me when I see those things. Next question was about the wrap itself. So this is a picture I, I snapped out of the video that I made about this specifically. And you can see the silver van with the panels of the uh, exterior color change uh, coming up on it. It was a fascinating video, um, a fascinating process, so much work. Um, he charged me, including tax, uh, $5,000 basically. Um, it was a tremendous amount of work. I can't remember the amount of square foot of the actual material, but it was a lot. It was like 400 square feet of material, something like that. Putting that perspective, we have a one bedroom condo for sale in, in Forest Park. It's basically 550 square feet. So you could cover that entire apartment almost with this brown material. That was the van wrap. Um, so if you're curious about this, um, hit Chuck, he's the owner at crdwraps.com. Um, highly recommend him. Um, I've kept him posted on this. If you go to his website, um, you can see the, um, some pictures of the, of the van itself and some of the other work he's done. He really kind of focuses on high-end cars and whoever wants to chrome wrap their, their vehicle, their van, he's the one to do it. He's done some of like, uh, things like that. Um, so that is kind of the van wrap story. So 600 for the front and, um, 600 for, uh, or five, five grand for the, for the, um, for the wrap and for, to get this uh, repair made, um, it cost me $300. So again, would I recommend it? It's really a personal preference. Um, I'm glad I wrapped it and not painted it because I can remove it. Um, I'm glad I did two surfaces, the entire van in brown, then silhouette. And that um, allows me to change that silhouette if I want it. Um, I would recommend I really, and, and by the way, I've had other van wrap companies because it attracts so much positive attention. Um, everybody wants to know what, what's up with this, with this vehicle. And it totally blends into the environment. I can't tell you what a difference it makes, even in a parking lot. It just kind of disappears into the background. And in a, a something like I'm at right now, a KOA, even in this, it just blends into the environment so much better than a big old van. <laughs> it's in silver, right? Um, so I would recommend if you want to change the look of your rig uh, that's not permanent, and if you want to maybe get a little bit of protection and you want to have your van um, seriously reflect your personality and you got money to spend on it, um, I would recommend doing that. Um, so hopefully that answers your questions. Um, 
Okay, so that was the van tour. Uh, I'm going to catch up on the comments. Uh, thank you for working through me there on the uh, experiment. I haven't done that before. I hear my Let's check my iPhone and see if it's still going out there. Yep. <laughs> I can hear it myself and my neighbors are going like, what the hell is going on? Okay. So let me catch up on questions. We've got about 15, 20 minutes. I'll go a little bit longer tonight. Um, as respect for our guests, I cut the others off pretty much top of the hour, but we'll go a little long because there are some un really great un unanswered questions uh, from last week. Um, so let me see where we left off here. Um, was that helpful? Van tour? The exterior tour? I get asked about this a lot. Um, I can't tell you how much positive, um, what's the right word, positive uh, feedback I get from that. And everybody thinks the van is so cool. Uh, it's just amazing. Uh, hang tight, I'm getting there. Um, so Kathy's got asking a good question. Uh, let's see. Here we are. I think this is the next one. So from Mary Goran said, didn't you say originally you wanted the silver so you could be more stealth? Um, yeah, because you had two options. You had the, the black or the silver. Um, I didn't want black because um, it shows dirt really badly. And um, the silver was nice. Some silvers are not nice. Um, and stealth, yeah. Um, but I'm uh, really glad I wrapped it. Um, yeah, Kathy says, cool, it's wrapped and then overwrapped. And uh, so it's been one one year and a month old that that's been done. And the material itself has a three year warranty, the brown. Um, and I think any jostling of the joints and stuff has probably settled out because there hasn't been any other issues. So I'm pretty confident this can run for many years to go. Um, and um, uh, hey, Saratoga New York, what's up? <laughs> Laura's got a great question here. Are you worried about being too recognizable with unique wrap? I, f I feel like I live in a fishbowl anyway, because the van's just so cool. I get recognized a lot of places because I have a YouTube channel, and that's really cool. Certainly in an RV environment, you know, RV shows, things like that. I get a lot of people um, recognizing me, and it's okay. I like talking about the van. I like talking about the RV lifestyle. I like talking about Class B RV. So, God, if I'm ever in your area and you see me, in fact, we've I, this was so this is so cute. So I was in um, Naperville, Illinois, going to my boss's house for a, a Sunday afternoon um, cookout. And uh, there was, and there's, there's kind of two responses to the van. Either it's a viewer that knows me and they're kind of doing this thing, right? It's like, I know you, I see you, I watch you, you know, you know something like that. So I know it's a viewer. They, they recognize the van, they recognize me. But this lady, um, uh, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Um, she was doing this kind of like stalking stuff. She was kind of following me through the, uh, through the thing, but not doing this thing, right? You know, I, I, I see you, I watch you. And uh, so I was kind of like, mm, and I'm late for my barbecue, so I'll just hurry away. She saw the URL on my website in the back of the van, and she actually showed up at the um, at the roundup, uh, unbeknownst to any of us. Um, we all had Travaz and stuff, and she's Char Charlene, oh gosh, I can't think of it. Really cool lady. I hope she reaches out to me um, because she's got some really cool products she, she sell sells. And so again, to your point, the van gets positive attention and I kind of like that. I'm used to living in a fishbowl now. Um, and I love it when people stop me and talk about the vans. And when I'm in an RV park like I am right now at KOA, everybody wants to talk about the van. And it's just the greatest thing. The only other one that gets that kind of attention is Airstreams because they're so cool. Um, too recognizable? You know, that kind of goes with being on YouTube. So I'm okay with it. Great question. Let's see. It's a couple of questions. Um, so Oscar wants to know about the uh, Ram ProMaster. Do you have any difficulty with Ram ProMaster van maintenance in the U.S.? Uh, no, because Ram dealers are everywhere. Engine maintenance. Um, I did replace the cylinder head at 49,000 miles, and I'm having to replace the uh, tire pressure monitoring system for the second time. Um, spare parts, not an issue. Um, not an issue. Uh, Chicago Land, come see us on the 10th of July for the roundup in Forest Park. It'd be a delight. Um, yeah, we're going to, I'm not sure where Springfield is, but we're going to probably do one in St. Louis. So stay tuned. I'm trying to get my, my trajectory just a little more organized and we'll start posting these. Um, thank you, Oliver. I'm doing well. I am so excited these days. And my, my bags <laughs> under my eyes um, continue to get, get, get dark, but I'm having a blast and I'm just so excited with Embassy RV, with Coachman, with Volta, with Channel. Um, and all this cool stuff going on. We, again, we have some really big announcements coming up uh, next week. That's why you have not been seeing edited videos because I'm changing things up. 
Um, and some of you may be really surprised by these changes. I hope you like them. I'm a little surprised by one of them by myself. Um, Go Green Mom might be really proud of me. I don't know. Um, so Mary Dean says they have a magnetic mag you can put on them. I, then you have to kind of fold it up was kind of my, my issue. I had a couple, um, I had a big, um, there was two pieces that I saved and I just, uh, I donated them. Um, uh, let's see, Kathy's got a good question. Are you still using the original blue dump hose? No. Um, so this is kind of funny. So what uh, Kathy's referring to is the sewer hose that comes with the Travado from Winnebago. Um, I don't know the manufacturer. I'm guessing it's Camco. I, I don't know, but it's a short hose and it's really like a slinky. So it wants to spring back together. It was short by about five by five feet. I'm going to guess it was a 10 foot hose fully stretched with two people on both ends, which you couldn't actually do at a sewer dump station. Um, interestingly, Kyle's class B plus um, Regency RV came with two. And I'm going to guess it was 15, if not 20 feet stretched all the way out. It does compress. So it fits in the same holder. Uh, but I cannot tell you what a difference it is. Um, I should actually make a video about that. Thank you, Kathy, for thinking about that. Because what a game changer. I can now with confidence put the hose into the hole and be further away from the, uh, the, the drain hole and pull the handle and have no issues. That was always a concern. So answer your question. No, I've, I've upgraded. Um, I don't use all the fancy collars and the fancy elbows and all that business because I don't have space for them. I want to fit in that side pocket um, so it's not in my van. Others have modded out other ways to keep the bigger hose outside. Great question. How are we doing on time? Um, let's do a few more questions. So I'll probably go to like 7.15 tonight. How many folks are we? Yeah, quite a few folks in here. This is great. Thumb up. Hey, if you're learning anything tonight, please uh, uh, push, press that like button. I sure appreciate that. Um, ooh, look at this. Your lives are about to change, Bob Scott. <laughs> Two really cool uh, husband and wives. I, I, they're just the greatest folks. And um, I am so happy for you. Um, I spent all day on Friday with Embassy. We talked about you know, how things are going, what our plans are. Um, we're going to do a Nashville camp, but we're not doing it in November. We're going to do it the first week in December. We're trying to tighten up the, um, the location to host us. Uh, so as soon as we have that nailed down, we're going to announce that, but it will not be the second weekend in November in Nashville. It's going to be the first weekend in December, 2021. Um, and his vans are very four seasons, so you'll have no issues, but I am really proud of you. That is so exciting. You, you've got to be like sleepless at night. Where's your first trip? That's going to be really exciting. Um, yeah, see, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. The deer just jump out uh, kind of willy nilly. Um, it just is really, really scary, scary. Um, so this is a Spokane Steven says the Bolt BL a different floor than a K copy. Yeah, it's a little different for sure. Um, but I think they could have done some really great things. Again, by comparison, look at what Coachman Galleria 24A floor plan has done versus what the Bolt is. And I think you'll, um, I'm not familiar with the BL. I'm assuming that's the K floor plan, the two twins in the bathroom in the back, um, which is just an oversized K in my opinion. I'm not specific on that to BL. Uh, L except for lithium, really it's got a huge lithium system in it, which is awesome. Um, yeah, actually, I, thank you, Michael. So, um, Ted Paul said they got knocked too. Same thing happened to them in California. Individual claiming they knew someone in the van, kind of a friends thing, if I remember right. And uh, it's just really kind of disconcerting. And there's options, so I'm just not doing that as readily. Uh, unless it's a historic district and I am really talking with the locals and if I can stay in a local business parking lot, uh, I've been doing that more readily, but just kind of staying on the street again, the Nashville bombing really shook me. And uh, just a couple of these, like these guys experienced, it's just not fun. And it's really hard to go back to sleep. And my worst night of sleeping is on a street. So what, again, what I do, it's in boondockers. Welcome. It's harvest hosts. It's a business parking lot. Maybe it's a bar. Say, Hey, last meal. Uh, maybe it's the last call, and can I stay in your parking lot, get the manager's car, put it in there, and everything's kosher. Car cracker barrels are awesome. Uh, we have one video coming up from Fort Myers, beautiful cracker barrel parking spot, um, and you're not going to get that in any of those kind of locations. So um, that's my how I roll these days. Street camping is just um, – I, and I get a good night's sleep all those other locations, not street camping. So while it's cool and can be done in a pinch, and I kind of like to crow about it, um, um, yeah, feedback noise. Love the echo stop. So let's see. Clarence. Um, 
this is kind of a question. So Matt wants to know, speaking of clearance, do you ever get nervous about driving under low hanging uh, communication power lines? I've noticed on the rural mountain roads in Tennessee, Kentucky have questionably low lines. Um, I keep an eye on them. It's not so much power lines as it is trees. Uh, trees are just everywhere. I was at this awesome uh, cemetery in uh, Louisville where Colonel Sanders is buried and Muhammad Ali. And the trees were just hanging all over the, the roads. And it's kind of a one lane road. Um, it was not comfortable. Um, I'm telling you, the first time you snag your rig and you're like, uh, it's the last time you avoid paying attention to clearance, whether it's above or below your van. Uh, but I've never seen power lines get that low. Um, if it does, I would call the authorities because that shouldn't be that low, in my opinion. Um, let's see. Uh, so Susan's got a question here. Again, we're going to go for about to about 7.15 tonight. So keep the questions rolling in. We still have a, a bunch more content. It includes some really cool news you will want to know about Volta. I'm going to get asked about this um, versus Lithionics and their UL rating. So stay tuned. Um, so Susan wants to know, hi, Scott. Have you ever had the buzzer on your privacy screen fail to turn off after putting it away? Uh, I would really like to disable this feature as is really unnecessary. Um, it is kind of unnecessary. It's kind of funny that it, it goes up. I guess they just didn't want to, you know, the snap to fall down and surprise you while you're driving. That would be a bad surprise. Um, Kevin Martin, 30 to wake up, no longer in a van, roaming around Hawaii. Or is he in Thailand already? I don't know. I haven't uh, watched the last little bit with him. Um, had the same problem. And I'm not sure exactly how he um, disabled it. There's probably an answer. I've never had a problem with mine. Mine, maybe I just got my van built at the right time, 2018, where they were building a little slower. And all the parts available, I you know I don't know. Uh, complete speculation on my part. Um, what I would recommend, though, to find the answer to that question, I'm sure you can find it pretty easy. Go to the Facebook group, uh, Travado Owners and Wannabes. Search first. Don't post a question because every question's probably been asked and is got a million answers. So just go in there, search. Uh, if you're not part of that group, every Travado owner should be. It's like a Wikipedia encyclopedia for everything Travado. I've even gone there and trying to get found solutions. I'm not asking the question because the questions largely have been asked, but by searching and then finding the answer. So that's what I recommend. Again, I've never had a problem. What she's talking about here, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not aware of it. So uh, in my front dash, um, there's two arms that come up that go onto the sides and they, and they pin into um, little pegs in the visors. And then you pull up the window shade on these rails. That's what these things are, it's these rails. And if you put the blind down, but the rails are still up, the minute you turn on the, I don't turn on the ignition, it's just the accessory mode, this blaring, it's as annoying as a smoke alarm going off and will scare you to death the first time, like your smoke detector going off. And once you lower those arms and the, the alarm goes off. So that's what Susan's talking about. There's probably a loose wire or something, um, but that would be my recommendation for you. Yeah, Kathy, this is a great point. It's He would actually probably charge more because he did so much work. And it is all hand labor, hand labor. And then the die cutting of the uh, the laser cutting, whatever they did with the um, the overlay, mine was pretty expensive. But um, it's so worth it. I just love it. I'd do it again in a minute. Yeah, I, we, we've done this, um, answer this question on the What's Up Wednesday show just a couple weeks ago. You know, am I trading vans? I get asked all the time, am I trading vans? You know, Paul and Chad are storytellers. And, and um um, was it Owen and, and what's her name? They got rid of their Travada, went to a Revel. Um, if my van got totaled tomorrow and I wasn't in it, hopefully, I'd go buy a National Park Edition. I'd peel off the stickers that Winnebago puts on. I'd wrap it. Um, I'd lift it. And I'd be a happy camper. Um, I'd get a GL for sure. Um, and I'd love that extra 30% that uh, they put in those uh, from a Volta perspective. So I'd do it all again. Put the brush guard on it. Exact same thing. Thank you. Appreciate that. Wrap looks great. Yeah. I'm glad you guys got to see them and gals. Um, yeah, Lydia, I get this question a lot. Um, well, for me, it's floor plan. Um, we spent a lot of time with Embassy RV. Um, I had them come into the van. I mean, we spent all day and with Coachman. I had them come into my van and I showed them how I work, eat, cook, sleep, use the restroom toilet, shower, sink. I walk those builders through this floor plan because this floor plan, in my opinion, is not what it is in the new 2022s. I'm kind of tired of bashing Winnebago about it. Maybe they'll see the light, but um, I would probably buy it, a floor plan like this. Um, there's some tweaks that can be done to this floor plan that I think Winnebago should do. 
Uh, but maybe somebody will pick up the um, slack here and build a G enhanced floor plan. Um, I love the coaching because of the, the, the woodwork ing. It doesn't have volt, has lithium, which is pretty good. Um, st you know, storyteller doesn't meet my needs because of the bathroom. So I'd go look for a used National Park Edition. That's what I would do. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, right? Um, yeah, wrap again was about five grand. Um, again, because I had it wrapped twice, the brown and then the black. So a lot of work goes into that. Um, then the question is, that's a good one, my gypsy, is uh, is it easy to remove uh, when you're ready to sell? I would get coaching from Chuck at CRD Wraps. He's the one that put it on. I would probably take it back to him. Um, he probably charged me a few hundred dollars to do it or show me how to do it. Um, uh, not even close to being that yet, but uh, I'm guessing it'd be pretty easy. If you've ever removed a, a, you know, a, a sticker decal or this kind of material, you know it adheres really well. And if you slowly pull it, um, probably want to heat it up or chill it even. I don't know. It's a good question. Maybe I'll reach out to Chuck and see what he suggests. Yeah, let's do a roundup, Diana. We got lots of those coming up, and it would just be um, a joy to me. I just love meeting you all. And I got the most warming comment from Catherine, her and her husband, um, Rob, I think. They got a GL. They love it. It was their second trip. They trekked out to Rockford to see me. And you should see this amazing email she um, she sent me. And she basically said, hey, you're kind of like the cool guy I see on YouTube. There's no difference. Um, and that just really warmed my heart. I, this, I am not an actor. I did, you know, YouTubing was not part of my life plan. And um, I just love meeting you, all of you, uh, hearing your stories, where, where, where you want to go. You know, what would you do different in your van? We got tours of their vans and some even you know, brand new have already made some uh, personalizations. It was just so cool. And when you, when you get your van, that's what you're going to do, or really any RV. Um, it's, your, it's, your, it's your personal space. It's outside of a house, probably the most expensive thing you'll buy. So you would make it yours, and um, it'd just be a delight to meet you. Okay, let's see if I can find some more questions. Um, keep them coming in. There's a couple others in here. And well, let's do this quick. So let me shift gears, and let's get um, – so we'd love to do a viewer recommendation of the week because I don't know everything. Oops, let me see if I get this off for one second. Um, we'll go just a few minutes uh, later tonight. We don't have a guest. Lily was our guest. Let's see if she's still there. Yep. <laughs> so funny. I can hear my – myself out there driving my neighbors crazy um okay so let's go to viewer recommendation this is a good one so if you don't have a wrap i can tell you the bugs do not stick to the wrap at all it's amazing i just literally um they just wipe off it's the craziest thing whereas they stuck big time to the paint and so this viewer this comes from oh no i didn't even give him credit gosh darn it um i apologize let me zoom in here so you can see it um it's a product a product called bugs off um and uh, it used to be called the Love Bug Eraser, apparently. I'm not sure what a Love Bug is. Uh, I've probably been one in my past. I don't know. Um, but it's a bug removal sponge. Um, you buy it at bugsoffpads.com. You can see it there. It's $17 for a three-pack. And it's specifically called out grasshoppers, love bugs, June bugs, mayflies, and I'm putting in flying other gross things. And let me tell you, the worst thing you want to get is one of those big, juicy, protein-laden um, bugs like a grasshopper that smashes your window, that stuff just is so hard to get off the window, uh, let alone the front of the van. So bugs off. If you have any experience with this, let us know on this. It was a great recommendation. I apologize for not giving credit where credit is due. And if you see at the bottom of the, um, the visual here, uh, this is where I get these folks. So this is your chance to share what you have learned and GSLL viewer recommendation at gmail.com. Please flood that email box with um, product recommendations, song of the week, pet pick of the week, because these are the kind of things we like to learn together, share, and then you decide, you try it. Um, I have a special uh, um, portion of my um, online store shop uh, where things that I'm actually using is in the top half, and then viewer recommendations like this will be, if these guys are on Amazon or otherwise, I'll, they'll, I'll put this link on there tonight in the, in the store, but they're viewer recommendations. So you give them a try. I have not tried them yet, so I can't vouch for them 100%. But that's like that's uh, how we like to roll here. So um, so give that a look and give that a test. Let us know if you have any experience with that. Uh, let me zoom back to the um, to the news of the night. This is a big deal. Uh, I mean, a huge deal. This is going to be a whole show of itself. Uh, I'm going to give the thing away right here. Are you ready for this? This is huge news. I am not kidding. 
there was uh, in RV News um, and RVPro.com press releases from Volta saying that they have now achieved three different levels of compliance testing that meet or exceed these standards. And UL, although that's not UL test, there's a, 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 this, this firm called Testing Engineers International. Um, same idea, UL. Um, tested to and above those standards. And I am so pleased um, to be associated with his team. They've been working on this. They kind of gave me a heads up and said, don't say anything until this stuff gets announced. And we're actually asking Jack or somebody from Volta to come back next month on What's Up Wednesday and discuss these three certifications specifically. These are automotive grade, um, well beyond um, what would be expected as a UL listing. And the ISO listings are really hard. Again, automotive grade not RV grade. That's the big deal here. I didn't want to get into trying to explain this to you, but the links on my uh, website are populated right now. There's two different stories that go into much greater detail. So go to my website, go small, live large.com, go to the woo W U W in the heading and click on those two uh, news articles. And you will get the gist of what these guys have been up to for a long time. And then gazillions of dollars that they spent getting these testings done. Um, I think it's going to be a game changer in the industry announce for others to follow a little bit. Um, again, we're in, inviting Volta back on What's Up Wednesday later in July to s address these things specifically. Um, so stay tuned for that. But please go check this out. If you've been concerned about um, these types of uh, engineering ratings, you're going to want to un understand and, and go see these. So I'm super, super proud of Volta. They're just the, they're just the greatest team. A cool product. In fact, I'm at this RV park. If you didn't notice, I'm not plugged in. I've been plugged in all day. And I'm at like 80% state of charge. Where's my thing? Right there. Um, running at 30 amps of shore power, which is sitting out here. I might go plug in tonight. I don't know. I don't need it. It's just kind of, it's like showing off at an RV park. Everyone's like, so where's all your sewer connections? Where's all your water connections? Where are they? I'm like, it's fan life, man. With a Volta system, I'm showing off. <laughs> I'll do my water tanks in the morning. Okay. One more little thing here I think I want to share, which is pet pick of the week. Give me a minute. And um, are you surprised by that? Um, those ratings for Volta. Uh, I, again, I'm just so pleased with them. Um, They're just such a great, such a great group. And if you're part of the uh, channel roundup, they came to tour the factory, the CEO and the co-founder CTO personally walked two groups through the Volta factory and they're expanding. They're adding a second line. Um, they are growing like crazy. And uh, if you got a chance to join us for that, uh, we had about 12 lucky folks got to be got to go through that. We will probably do it again next year. Um, they were blown away. And some of them were a little bit naysayers on the Volta system versus Lithionics, for example. And they were blown away. Um, it was pretty cool. Okay, so winding down, we've got a few more questions to go, but I have to share this with you. So we've alluded to our Route 66. This is our viewer song of the week. I did not know. Did you know? that Bing Crosby did a Route 66 version of that song. And it's kind of funny. It's in the um, kind of a big band era. And he's got some female backup singers. And it's pretty cool. Um, I am just so juiced to Route 66. That's been on my bucket list since I was a little guy. Um, and I'm already getting recommendations from you folks. So again, next week, I think we have two big announcements. Um, I kind of let the cat out of the bag on Route 66. But... Um, but if you haven't listened to that version, um, go to your favorite music source, type that bad, bad boy song in and uh, listen to it. It's very different from everything I've seen. Um, my favorite is the Depeche Mode version. I really, you know, I'm an old guy, graduated high school in 83. So Depeche Mode was big in my world back then. Thumb up if you're learning anything tonight. Sure, appreciate that. Let me see if I got anything else here. Oh, yes, Pet Pick of the Week. How can I forget this? This, is, this comes from James. James, wait till you see Gracie. Are you ready for this? Look at Greasy. He's trained that dog how to sit in a basket on his in his bike. And there he is on his hind legs. Or she. Because um, he knows he's get, uh, she's going to be put in the basket. So she's kind of standing up so he can pick her up. A terrier mix. What an adorable dog. Even and This is the cool thing about dogs. He, he, I don't think you ever get a cat in a basket. It could sure as heck never get a cat to wear ski goggles. What are those things? Uh, there's no way you could do that. But... Um, Thank you for sending that in. Again, the way we, I just let pets so enhance it. So we've decided to get a new, new cat. Um, I think when I get to my um, parents' house in Spokane, Washington, in a couple months, we're going to get a cat. Um, at my Volta training today at Lazy Days RVs, um, one of the uh, service ladies 
daughters had um, cat had kittens, a six week old kitten. I absolutely fell in love with the picture. Um, I called Kyle today. I'm like, what do you think is we get a cat now? He reminded me I've got Route 66 coming up, so I got bigger fish to fry right now. But um, we just love sharing pet pics. The pet really enhances the RV experience. I can tell you that for sure. Not having one initially, having Luke with me for a year and a half, that was my cat, um, our cat. And now he's been gone since March. Um, what a hole uh, in my life, in our lives, and in the van life, um, not having a pet. So I can't wait to get one. Are you having fun tonight? Are you enjoying this? I hope you are. Um, you're the diehard stick, sticking around. Okay, I think that's it for tonight. Let's take a look. Yes, so just a few more questions, and then we'll call a wrap. Exterior wrap, pun intended. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, we got that one. Uh, so Gypsy, we kind of, uh, well, well, I'll see if we can get this question answered. So um, Gypsy's asking about the wrap. Is it easy to remove when, when, when you're ready to sell the van? I'm, I'm sure it's pretty easy. Um, it's probably way harder to put on than it is to take off. Uh, maybe we'll have an unwrapping party. Wouldn't that be fun? And we'll, we'll sell, we'll sell snippets of the van wrap and give the money to charity. Um, KOAs have a great, um, a van camp. What's they call it? Kids camp, something here, charity. Um, where they help kids that have really serious uh, health issues, maybe even like what's that one if it, you know, somebody's going to be dying of a terminal illness, um, they bring them to, to camp here at a KOA. Maybe we can sell snippets of the wrap and raise money to charity. Wouldn't that be cool? Give it to the KOA folks uh, for their for their charity. Um, okay, I'm scanning for last questions. Um, this is a great question. Thank you, Arkansas Tracy. Have you got any gas on the wrap by filling up? Yes. And lubricant? And what else have I put on this? Thing? Windex? Um, I haven't used any car wash soap, uh, except for what comes out of a car wash brush, which is kind of a no-no. Um, and I can say this stuff is bulletproof. Uh, you can never tell where any of that has happened. Great question, because on the gas, I was worried about that. You know, if it drips, is it going to uh, cause any um, discoloration? Maybe it melts the plastic? Um, it's 3M. I mean, they make great stuff, and I can tell nothing of any difference on, with those three, um, four different kinds of materials being on the on the rig. Um, Windex is kind of funny. Windex. So, how many of you have seen the the movie My My Big Fat Greek Wedding, where the dad uses Windex for everything, including pimple medicine? I'm that guy. <laughs> use Windex for everything, including pimples <laughs> and mosquito spray if I run out on my legs. Probably not the greatest stuff I know. Great question. So yeah, no problems there. Scanning for last questions. Uh, oh, thank you, Michael. So Michael bought a Harvest Host uh, membership, membership site from my website. So thank you. You saved 15%. I made a couple bucks. That's really cool of you. Um, I think right now you have to buy separate ones. I don't have a good answer for that. Um, I'm planning on doing some content about this in terms of how I roll. Um, with boondockers and, and harvest host, I kind of overlay them. So I do a few days of harvest host, which are really cool places, but they're kind of expensive for me because I end up buying whatever the business is, whereas boondockers is, is really kind of free. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that is. My guess is it's still two separate things, just ownership. I would expect over time they would overlay into a single app, uh, which would be interesting. Um, good question, but thank you for buying for me. I uh, really appreciate that. And I think it will be a game changer for you. The best thing about harvest host and boondockers welcome is it takes you to places you wouldn't go. To me, that's the biggest benefit. It's just the coolest thing. And they're usually cool people, you know? Um, yeah, uh, MP's got a good point here. There are many variations in brush guard design, functionality, uh, what's most important. For me, it was the deer strikes. You know, I'm a, there's some that have like a mesh on the front, kind of meant for like trucks. That's truly a brush guard. Um, you don't want, you know, sagebrush and stuff getting stuck in your radiator grill. Um, I was, again, more worried about deer strikes, road debris, and aesthetic. So I didn't need the, the grill. Somebody just knocked over their barbecue. <laughs> um, and um, so that's what I would recommend. But kind of search search online. Um, the Travado Owners of Wannabes page probably has some additional ideas there for you. So Lydia's concerned about my safety. I appreciate that. Um, so far, so good. Hey, I got bear spray, right? We talk, whoops, get this off the screen. Um, <laughs> we had a great video at DA by a viewer um, and he actually sent me so this thing right here is actually bear spray and I'm not in the woods for bears I'm worried about crazy people 
I, and zombie uh, apocalypse attacks and things like that. So um, I can't remember the viewer's name uh, to give him credit, but when we put this video together, you can actually buy this with the inert gas inside. So there's no pepper spray. It's just air, but it performs like this. So we're going to do, I still have some place that I can practice this. We're going to need a couple of people. Um, we're going to practice what that looks like. Cause I don't want to release bear spray with never having done it before. Uh, I don't know about you, but like, um, just like practicing with a fire extinguisher, you know, you should probably fire one off once to see what it, it, it does. Until you have a, so when you have a real emergency, you know what's going on, but thank you Lydia for your concern. I appreciate that. Um, let's see, we might be running out. So beyond intentions, good to see you tonight. Thank you for that. Awesome couple. Uh, they're the ones that they live in their um, GL that turned me on to the coffee situation. So awesome. Um, hey, Mississippi, what's up? Um, okay, I think we are pretty much run the gamut here. Thank you so much. Let me switch this, and uh, I would like to put this up. Um, whoops, let me take uh, Mississippi off. There we go. Um, just want to thank you. Uh, you have no idea how much you mean to me, each and every one of you, whether we meet uh, you know, through this uh, environment here, YouTube, through email, phone calls, um, texting, come to the roundups. I give you my personal information. You can text me. We become buddies. And um, Jane, who was at my Wallace uh, camp out, um, her and I talk uh, fairly regular, right? And uh, she's leaving um, Arizona. She's doing a cross country tour all the way to the other coast. Kind of interesting. Um, but you drive me. Each and every one of you drive me forward. And that's why we're making some pretty big channel changes. We're going to be announcing that. Um, and it kind of starts with a Route 66. Um, so you want to tune in next week. Um, I think we had some cool stuff you will like to see. And again, thank you for watching the live tonight. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing, giving it a thumbs up. The um, It's just it's great. And if you're watching the replay, thanks for sticking through, watching the, uh, the exterior van tours. Uh, comment below. Are you kind of surprised by how well that thing has held up? I am. And I would do it again. I would recommend it if you want those kind of things done to your van. So, um, so with that, we say thank you. And until we see you soon, I wish you too. Journey on. Bye for now.